Hi everybody, my name is Joey and I'm the Perfect Score Tutor. I've gotten perfect scores on both the SAT and ACT. However, I'm here today with a copy of the 2024 free response questions to the Calculus AB exam. I'll be breaking down the free response questions into detail so you can predict how you did on this exam. Or if you're looking at this from a future test date, you can use this walkthrough to study for your upcoming Calc exam. Question two is one about particular motion. We have a particle moving along the x-axis so that its velocity at time t is equal to zero is given by this function. And then part a says there is a time on the interval zero to two when the particle is at rest or not moving. So you gotta remember that when a particle is not moving or at rest, we're looking for where its velocity is equal to zero. So then I've gone ahead and plugged the graph into my calculator, but we're going to need to adjust our window, right? So it says the particle is moving between 0 and 2 seconds. And then since we're looking for where the particle is at rest or where the velocity is 0, it's fine for me having my y min at negative 1 and my y max at 1. I'm going to graph it over here, and then I see that there is a point over here, so let's calculate that point. Second calc, I'm calculating the 0. I need to trap it to the left of the point. And then I need a right bound. And it says my zero is at 1.426, three decimal places. So to show that I know what I'm doing, I'm going to say v of t is equal to zero when t of r is equal to 1.426, is it seconds? It doesn't tell me, so there's no units here. And then the second part of the question, it says, for zero is less than t is less than tr, is the particle moving to the right or the left? Remember that when the particle is moving to the right, that's when your velocity is positive, and when your particle is moving to the left, that's where your velocity is negative. Well, if we look at our graph of our particle, it's above the x-axis, so v of t is positive on that interval. So let's answer that question using a complete sentence. For zero is less than t is less than 1.426, the particle is moving to the right because v of t is positive on that interval. So here you get full credit if you mention in a full complete sentence that v of t is positive on the interval that you found. B says find the acceleration of the particle at time t is equal to 1.5. So that one's pretty easy, right? Just remember that acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So I'll go to math and derive, I plug my function into y3, so vars, functions, y3, and then I'm going to plug in the point 1.5. And I get negative 0.999. That's interesting. Another way you could do it is if you want to go to your graph, and then you can go second calc, and then you can do dy dx, and then I want to plug in the point 1.5 for that. I get that my derivative there is negative 1. So either way, I get negative 1, right? Because I'm going to have to round up there. How do I show my work then? I can say that a of 1.5 is equal to v prime of 1.5 is equal to negative 1.000, three decimal places. Now, is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing at that time? So remember that speed increasing is when your velocity and acceleration have the same sign, and speed decreasing is when your velocity and acceleration have opposite signs. So we also then need to go and say something like this. V of 1.5 is equal to, let's figure out what it is on my graph. V of 1.5 is negative 0 0.77, three decimal places. which is less than zero. And then a of 1.5 is also less than zero. And so we can write this out using a complete sentence now.
So for you to get full credit on this question, you need to show that you're calculating V of 1.5 and A of 1.5. Otherwise, you're not showing your work, right? Because anybody can say that they have the same sign. And then you would also need a sentence using complete and proper grammar that says that velocity and acceleration either both are negative or both have the same sign. What a lot of students do wrong is they just calculate the acceleration and see that it's negative, but that's not enough to get you any credit on this question. Part C gives you the position of the particle at time t is equal to 1 and asks you to find the position of the particle at time t equals 4 and show the setup for your calculation. Well, they gave us our starting point and our ending point, so what we want to do is we want to integrate from 1 to 4 of the velocity function. So then when I plug that in my calculator, I get 0 0.197. Now if you stop there, you're not going to get full credit for this question because remember that the integral from 1 to 4 represents the displacement of the particle. So we need to add our starting point to find our final position. So x of 4 is equal to 0 0.197 plus x of 1. Right? We started at a certain point and we added this much to our final point. So then we start at negative 3, so then our final answer would be 2.803. Part D says find the total distance traveled by the particle from 1 to 4 and show the setup for your calculation. So like I said in the previous question, if you just integrated from 1 to 4 of v of t dt, that would only give you the displacement. To find the total distance, we want to take the integral of the absolute value of velocity. So then we go to here, we go math, calculator integral, and then from 1 to 4. And then here we go back to math and we plug in abs for absolute value of y of 3. And then we get our total distance traveled is 0 0.958. Let's predict the point distribution for question two. I think you'd probably get a point for calculating where T of R is, where the particle is at rest. And then you'd get another point for writing a complete sentence that indicates that the particle is moving to the right. For part B, they want the acceleration. So you'd probably get a point for calculating the acceleration. Then you'd probably get a point for showing that V and A are both negative. And then you get a third point for writing a complete sentence talking about how the speed is increasing with the proper reasoning. So part C, you'd probably get a point for calculating the correct displacement. Then you'd get another point for utilizing the starting point. And then you'd probably get a third point for calculating the correct position at time t is equal to 4. And then since D is a simple question, you'd probably get all or nothing, right? So this would just be one point over here. Thanks so much for watching this video. If something was unclear or you needed me to break down an explanation even more, feel free to leave a question or comment below.